Hello everyone and today we're going to be talking about Math Mech. Now in our last video around Math Mechs we talked about a going second centric build utilizing powerful cards such as Lightning Storm as well as the Billion Blade Nayuta with our final segment in order to secure a swift OTK going second. In this version what we're going to be doing is looking at a slightly more competitive version of the deck built to be going first as often as possible. Uh, what makes this deck different than the last one? Well, we have cut a lot of our actual pure math mech support down in favor of more hand traps as well as utilizing small world. Now, this will basically turn any of your monsters, except Parallel Exceed, into a math mech circular, which basically makes it a way, an additional method of searching for your circular. This entire deck is just centered around the idea of getting this guy into your hand as quickly as possible. Uh, small World then assists with that, Sign Up Mining assists with that, and then you've got the three circulars, so there's nine copies, so there's a really high chance of you opening up with either circular or a way of searching it, or at the very least, if you don't, you're almost guaranteed to open up with a way to summon out one of your uh, Alimbertion in order to search it out that way. So there are quite a number of ways of going into circular, which is the entire focus around the deck. We're going to be doing a card for card at the end, and I'm going to be talking about Small World for those who maybe aren't fully familiar with how this card works. I'm going to be talking about it at the end anyway. I'll be discussing all of the bridges and routes you can use with this card. Uh, but yeah, the deck is purely focused around abusing Laplacian, uh, and it is around the link package and I, I keep on sort of switching back and forth on sort of what some of the link cards are. I finally settled on this version of it. I think this is going to be one of the best ways of playing Math Mechs and to be honest it's going to be one of the best decks in the format period. Uh, so you're going to be seeing a lot of this deck so it's best to either watch this to pick up on it and start using it yourself if you want to get securing some easy wins or if you want to be learning how to counter the deck and see some of its biggest weaknesses which we're also going to talk about. Uh, but enough on that, if you like what you're seeing and you want to see anything more like this, subscribe. We have finally had our goal for 1,000 subscribers, so now we're just going to keep on climbing up as high as we can. We're going to see how far we can bring this. Uh, so yeah, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you do in fact enjoy what you're watching. Full deck profile at the end, we've got a couple of replays coming up, and with that, let's get into game number one. Alrighty, this first replay is going to be centered around showing off the going first combo when you have the circular. So circular basically, just like in our last profile, circular will dump the sigma from deck to graveyard to summon itself, which will trigger its effect to search your deck for a uh, math mech spell or trap card. Uh, our opponent goes to Ash Blossom us here, we decide that we might as well hit this with Call by the Grave. Uh, it doesn't look like our opponent's going to have any other big targets for it and we want to get some value out of it. So that is a perfect then, we're going to ditch the Ash Blossom. Uh, so Circular will resolve, it will grab us the uh, Math Mech Super Factorial, which is pretty huge. Our um, Alimbertion, I always mispronounce its name, Alimbertion then detached to, to grab the Math Mech Diameter from our deck here. Normal Summon Diameter, Summon out Circular from your Graveyard, Link 1 into Link Disciple, and then another Link 1 into Link Devotee. Now Link Devotee stomps you from summoning Link 3 or higher for the rest of the turn, so Alimbertion is going to tribute our Devotee to summon back uh, Circular. That's going to trigger Devotee to summon out two tokens to the field. Then we're going to link two off into Cyber to Wicked. And then we're going to link two off into IP Mask Arena. And then at this stage, I can't remember if at this stage we were playing Lingaribo. Uh, we may be, we may not be. Yes, we are. So yes, we go into Lingaribo then using our last remaining card. We also utilize Small World. Not only does Small World help search your deck for circular, it also helps turn some of your cards into hand traps. So we ditch the Parallel Exceed to grab an Effect Feeler. Basically just gives us an extra interruption during our opponent's turn, and then we pass it over to them. Uh, so that is the turn one combo. That's what you're going to be doing virtually every single game you get the opportunity to. The only real difference is what other interruptions and follow-ups you're going to have alongside it. Uh, looks like we're playing against Drytrons. Now that's very interesting here. So given that information, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be triggering our IP Mask Arena early so that we can summon out a free material Apollosa. Uh, we know the Drytrons are going to try activating a lot of monster effects in order to generate their card advantage, so we want to be stopping that as quickly as we can. We're going to go Altaius, Altaius, we're going to negate it so it doesn't actually get to summon, uh, nor activate its effect, which is again going to slow our opponent down. Uh, they are going to basically, yes, at that stage scoop because we had two additional monster negates in the form of our Apollosa, and then we had our 
Super Factorial, which was going to be able to snipe a card on his field as well as one out of his hand. So it was going to be extremely difficult for our opponent to generate any level of momentum against us there. Uh, so yeah, really, really powerful. I just wanted to show that off in terms of getting a full glimpse at the uninterrupted going first combo. That's the combo you're going to aim to achieve almost every single time you play this deck, uh, whenever you're able to go first. Going second, you're going to do mostly the same thing, except you may change it here and there depending on what your opponent's board is. But by and large, if you learn that sequence of plays, you're going to be able to pick Mathmech up relatively easily. So given that information, let's get into game number two. Already going up against a 60 card pile here. I remember this this game being relatively uh, entertaining. We're gonna go our circular into Sigma like we normally do. Sigma comes out to the field. Circular grab the super factorial from our deck. That is pretty much our main setup here. Uh, Alan Bershian's gonna ditch two materials to grab us the math mech diameter, which we're able to normal summon and then special summon from grave. You're seeing how circular is literally just one card combo. Uh, circular is the only card you need to see in your hand in order to make any of this work. That's it. That's why the whole deck is centered around finding your circular out of your deck, getting it into your hand as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, that's the entire focus of the deck, and this is why. Because all of this is circular. That's it. That's the only card you need. Uh, all of the plays are virtually identical to the last game here for your going first. Again, like I said, the only change is the peripheral support you've got for it. We're able to set four and pass it over to our opponent here. Our opponent, of course, playing a 60 card pile. It's going to be interesting to see what they've got. They're starting it off with some branded support going Albion, followed by branded fusion. Of course, playing 60 card deck, they're just going to top deck it. Our opponent actually has the Forbidden Droplet. Now, they had Nibiru, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, unless they just drew it off of their Albion or their top deck. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're going to use Forbidden Droplet now to negate our Mascarina. Which is obviously very bad. We don't want that happening. So Mascarina then, uh, of course, is not able to resolve this turn. Our Wicked also gets negated so it doesn't protect itself. So all in all, not great for us. Our opponent's gonna go Despian Tragedy here. We've got two we've got two copies of Call by the Groove set. We may as well utilize one of them to prevent tragedy from generating all of that advantage. Uh, what we're going to do now is in preparation for the mirror jade coming out, we're going to preemptively set up our math mech uh, sort of combo here, which is going to be ideal. We'll uh, exceed free off into Laplacian. Banish the uh, Tragedy from the graveyard. I, I'm struggling to get names out today. Uh, banishing Tragedy so it doesn't get to search. He is going to fusion summon out the Ice Blade Dragon. So now we're going to get to use our Laplacian's effect. Laplacian uh, detach two to send one from hand and one from field to graveyard. They're going to activate their Mirror Jib. We're going to activate Laplacian to negate their banish. They are not banishing us here today. Not a damn chance. Mirror Jib then gets negated and then gets sent to the graveyard alongside the gra <laughs> that grass looks greener in their hand. Mirajig goes to activate to destroy our field during the end phase, but we quickly use Call by the Grave to knock that in the head. We don't want to be putting up with that. Uh, so that is the Mirror Jade, banished and useless. And the final card in our opponent's hand is the Fallen of Albaz. So they're just going to go summon out their uh, Fallen of Albaz, just being petty. They're going to destroy our IP Mask Arena, and then they're going to pass turn back to us. So they set the Brand of Banishment from their deck, and that's where our Cosmic Cyclone comes in, banishing it before it is even live completely dismantling our opponent's board uh, i believe they they recognize quite quickly here this isn't going to go their way we go balance the lord into diameter we bring a monster back with diameter uh we go into update jammer uh, update jammer and the cyber wicked then is going to bring out the access code talker access code talker is going to completely obliterate our opponent easy easy game there with access code whenever it comes to your follow-up Access code is almost always going to be that follow-up. It's going to OTK your opponent with absolute ease. This is not a control deck, it's a stun deck. You're just using your first turn setup to completely disarm your opponent and any potential sort of negation and follow-ups they could potentially have. And then on turn three, you're just coming in with that access code hard and heavy, thick and fast, and completely destroying them. That's the entire idea behind the deck. You stun them turn one, turn three, you come in and just obliterate. That's the idea. It's relatively straightforward. The combo is, uh, while it's not the simplest combo in the world, it's also not super complicated and it is rather rigid, so it can simply be studied and learned. You don't need to be super uh, 
in depth to pick the deck up and at least try playing it. You don't need to be an absolute expert, but if you just pick it up, do the combo, learn the combo, and then you'll sort of see the branching paths off of it as you develop your skills playing the deck over and over. But I'm not going to sit here and ramble just after you number two. Let's get into number three. Alrighty, game three here, and this is where we're going to see Small World. So what does Small World actually do for the, for the uninitiated when it comes to this? What you do is you pick a monster in your hand, right? So in this case, I believe we chose Balancer Lord. Uh, doesn't matter. So we choose a monster in our hand. We search our deck for a monster that has exactly one of five traits in common with it. Type, attribute, level, attack, or defense. Only one thing in common. So we have Balance of Lord in hand. So what we're going to do is check our deck for a monster that has that is either level 4, or has 1700 attack, or has 1200 defense, or is light, or is cybers. No more than one, no less than one. So we get effective healer from our deck. So then what we do after that is we banish the monster in hand and we check the deck for another monster in the deck that has exactly one of these traits in common with our second monster. So now we're looking for something that is a spellcaster or has zero defense or has zero attack or is level one or is light. Only one, no more than one, no less than one. And what is that? That is circular as a light monster with nothing else in common with effect healer. That means that Small World is essentially going to combo with almost every card in your deck alongside either Effective Healer or Nibiru to search your deck for Circular, which basically makes a three additional copies of Circular. Pretty nuts. Love to see it. Circular then, of course, doing the combo like we always do. Uh, we are going to speed through this one. Circular then, of course, grabbing the Super Factorial, going off of the um, Alambertian, if I can pronounce that correctly. At some point, I'm going to have to sit and listen to that. He ashes the Alambertian, which is a pretty good ash, so we don't actually get to do any of our link plays. That's not so great for us, but we still, of course, have our Super Factorial live, as well as an Imperm and a Cosmic Cyclone, as well as Ash. So we're not in a terrible position here. We still have quite a few interruptions. Uh, our opponent's going to go into the Fallen of Alabaz. We have no choice but to negate this. Uh, otherwise, we would be dealing with a Mirror Jade along before we are ready to deal with one. Uh, we really need to be having our super factorial in play before we can start messing around with a mirror jade uh, our opponent's gonna go polymerization here they're really holding off on that branded fusion for now they're gonna go straight into a guardian chimera that is a problem chimera then is gonna pop a card we decide that listen it's not worth the heal miri because the destruction is non-targeting if we activate super factorial right now it doesn't matter because our Laplacian will simply get destroyed prior to its activation uh, or at least it would have if I had remembered its, its effect, I probably would have done so, but he takes out our monster anyway. Uh, he's going to go for the Allure of Darkness here. Uh, we of course have Ash in hand, we're going to use the Ash now. We're assuming at this stage he doesn't have Branded Fusion because he's sort of gone so far in this turn without using it. He attacks us directly here for quite a lot of damage, 6300. He sets a card face down, we're going to use Cyclone here to banish it from the top of the deck. He's got the Virus cards in this absolute mess. Uh, we're going to activate Sigma Engrave here, but we again, we have virtually nothing. Uh, the Super Factorial really is our only method of getting anything done. And again, uh, with the Dramaturge and everything on board, that's going to get uh, more challenging because we don't have the free Math Mix Engrave that we need. So we only really would have been able to go into an Alambertian and it would have been instantaneously negated by the Dramaturge. Not he's going into Masquerade though. There's absolutely zero way is in which we can win this game. It just, we, with 700 life points, we can't possibly do it. So we end up just surrendering. Uh, it is what it is. Branded Despia is still one of the best decks in the game. I believe it's now sitting at tier three, uh, which is actually the same tier as Mathmex. Mathmex making waves in the metagame and rightfully so. This deck is nuts, but Branded Despia, do not count it out. If you try to treat it like it's a joke, like it's yesterday's news, it is going to trample you. So be careful. Be smart when you're playing against them, and let's get into game number four. Already game four here, and this is just a hand of hand traps. That's, uh, on occasion, this is going to happen. Uh, at the same time, it looks terrible, and it's not ideal, but at the same time, look at your hand. You have more than enough opportunities to stop and negate your opponent. We've got four spots of interruption here. They're going to go with Chi Chi with their Attic Nisters. We're going to negate that with an Ash Blossom. Link one off into Dark Infant. Dark Infant, of course, searching their deck for the busted ass field spell. 
which we're also not going to allow. We're going to negate that with the Veiler. Uh, so I don't believe they get to use this multiple times per turn. Exactly, yeah, so that's just negated. Without their field spell, they're going to have a very hard time in comboing off here. So we're in a pretty good spot. They're going to try and go into their uh, additional plays here with the Splash Mage. They're basically just trying to combo up. They're going to go Splash Mage. We're going to use Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion to negate. Now, was that the best negate in the world? Uh, not really, but if he uses his Gachiri as material for his transcode talker then it ends up being unaffected by our ghost bell anyway so we're going to ghost bell right there and then then we're going to use the call by the grave on the target of transcode talker so the gachiri isn't uh, a factor at all in the mathematics of the equation so all, he all he's really got is his transcode talker he's used a lot of his link, link extinction plays uh, and that's fine all we need to do is top deck a good card we unfortunately don't we top deck infinite impermanence so again, we're just holding on. We just need to get a card. If situations like this, they will happen on occasion. We're playing like 18 hand traps or some crazy nonsense. They go for Transcode Talker once again. We are going to use our Infinite Impermanence to stop that from resolving. Uh, we just need to keep him down for as long as we possibly can. He does manage to finally go into Access Code Talker, uh, which is of course going to be a massive amount of damage, but it's not enough for a game be it 4,000 or 400 life points. As long as we've got life points, we've got away. So we're gonna top deck the circular from here. We're just taking over this game. Send Sigma, summon circulars, summon Sigma. Activate circulars effect to search our deck for a math mech card, he negates us. We literally do not care at this stage. We're not holding on for a super factorial. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is linking off into Link Disciple. Link Disciple then triggering off our Parallel Exceed to summon itself, as well as an additional copy from the deck. Uh, we're going to link, uh, sorry, Exceed off using two of our monsters into Alambertion. Alambertion detaching to, to search our deck for a uh, diameter, or at least it would have if we didn't get negated. Now, does this put us in a bad spot? Not really, we have so many resources. We're just gonna link two off into Splash Mage, Splash Mage, Revive. This guy's not the only one who can link climb with Cybers. We can do that just fine as well. Transco Talker bringing back our Splash Mage. I do think we misplaced slightly here. Yeah, we do. Uh, so right here, uh, we decided that given the fact that if we went into Access Code Talker, right, and it wasn't enough for game, that it was going to leave, well, obviously we knew it wasn't going to be enough for game, so it was going to put us in a very difficult spot. So what we did is we decided Avra Max is going to keep us alive, it's going to make sure he can't attack anything but it, and it's also pretty difficult to remove. So we're going to stick to Avra Max, swing in, it still gets rid of the access code talker. Uh, we can only attack with one monster thanks to Circular, so we're just going to end this turn and hopefully he can't top deck a card that can out the Crusadia Avra Max. He sets one and passes. That's not going to do him an awful lot of favors here in this matchup. He needs to finish us right now, and unfortunately, he's not able to do so. We're going to use Splash Mage, grab back the Circular, summon back the Sigma because we can, exceed off into Alambertion. We're not taking any chances with this face down card. We need to make sure that we're in a position to negate it as soon as it's activatable. That's why we're going into Diameter, Diameter Revive Circle, and Link off into Access Code talker this is where we're gonna go for game here boosting up to 43 banishing a card to pop a card getting rid of the cosmic cyclone and going in for game now you'll notice avramax wasn't in the deck profile at the end we had Apollosa instead uh but uh, basically i'm just switching between the two Apollosa and avramax completely you, you can just sort of play whatever your heart desires whichever one you've got uh but yeah really cool game there where we're sort of trying to survive on hand traps until we can finally draw a useful card uh, that's the cost of playing a deck that's focused around one specific play uh, because you're able to play because you're focusing around that one play that means you can play a lot of hand traps meaning if you open up with the play you're in a really strong position because you have lots of other interruption on top of your primary combo the downside of that type of deck is that if you don't open up with that one key card uh, regardless of how many thing, ways you have of searching it, then you're in trouble because now you've just got a bunch of hand traps. So it's not always ideal, but you can almost always survive until you get a decent card like we did here today. Uh, but yeah, very simple gameplay, very straightforward. Just survive until you get circular and then simply win the game. Just simply win. It's as easy as that. Let's get into the deck profile and we're going to talk a little bit more about it. 
All right, so here we have Circular the deck. So that's basically the entire idea behind this, right? Uh, you're trying to focus on a deck that can search for or utilize Circular to the best of its abilities because this is single-handedly the card that makes Math Mech good, right? It's this card. This is the only one. So instead of, you know, focusing all our attention and playing all sort of mad amounts of different Math Mechs and doing all sorts of crazy combos, let's just take the deck for what it's good at, take the best parts and focus on them. So this deck is focused entirely around circular so because of that we're able to play an absolute ton of hand traps so we're able to play double veiler double maxi triple ash blossom double ghost bell ghost bell is going to be phenomenal in this meta with math mech running around quote me on that we've got the nibiru we've got the triple cosmic double call by the grave and the triple infinite impermanence so there's 18 slots in your deck 18 slots go nuts do whatever you want. My only request is that whenever you're doing so, you do so bearing in mind Small World. That specific lineup of hand traps and interruptions is pretty important to the deck whenever you factor in the fact that Small World is utilizing them to search for cards. So 18 slots for you to do whatever you want with. If you don't want to play Small World, there's an extra three. Play more Math Mech stuff. But this, the, the whole point of this deck is Search Circular. So that's why you're playing Small World. I'm going to bring all the hand traps back up because they are pretty important to the description of the deck. So that's how it works in terms of our actual Cybers cards. Of course, we're going to start with Circular because it's the best one. Circular, send a Math Mech from Deck Degree of the Special Summon itself out to the field. And then when another Math Mech is Special Summon to the field beside it, it's going to search your deck for a Math Mech Spell or Trap card. That is the entire core combo of your deck because you're going to get Circular in your hand, activate its effect to send Sigma from Deck to Graveyard, uh, to summon Circular to Field, then you activate Sigma Engrave, which will Special Summon Sigma to Field, triggering Circular's effect to search your deck for Super Factorial. There's your main going first combo piece, Super Factorial, being the best card in your uh, deck in terms of actual interruption. This is your best engine card, but it's a good engine card because it, ena it enables this. Then what you're going to do is exceed off into your Alumbersion, and detach to to search for your diameter diameter normal summon revive one and you're going to do the whole combo right the whole combo that we we described it already in the gameplay watch the gameplay if you want to see it we do it in virtually all of the games but that's that's the combo you want to get circular uh sigma then is just another part of that combo we can special summon itself to the field if there's no monsters in your extra monster zone uh you've got math mech addition and subtraction which are just free special summons don't worry too much about them they're also useful bridges for small world you can bump these guys up i would recommend playing at least one of each right uh because they are free summons and you're not always every single game going to open circular so having some fallback options is very very important and they are very good bridges for small world double diameter you could bump this up to three if you want uh I think in a going first variant, I know in my going second variant I only played one and people weren't too happy about that for some reason. Uh, I think if you're focusing on going second you only really need one because you're winning on that turn. Uh, but whenever you're going first you definitely need at least two. Just two is part of your core combo by itself because you search for one off of Alumbertion uh, to actually participate in the combo and then your Cyber's Wicked during the combo is going to search your deck for your second. So you need at least two for the combo. Uh, you can play three if you want to be extra, but yeah, 100%. Diameter is amazing. On normal summon, revive a level four cybers monster in your graveyard, be it a math mech or otherwise, and special summon it. That will then allow you to set up some link plays or in a pinch, some exceed plays as well if you're going second. Uh, also, if it's used as material for a math mech exceed or synchro monster for the uh, duration of the turn on which that monster is summoned, it gains an additional effect, which is essentially an omni negate, which is brutal this card is amazing especially in combination with super factorial and uh, yeah you definitely want to be playing at least two diameter and that's pretty much it for the math mech cards uh we're playing balancer lord which is a uh, sort of pseudo math mech card uh basically you can pay a thousand life points to gain an additional normal summon which works really well alongside your diameter it's a fantastic bridge it's a level four cybers so well, there's a number of reasons that we're playing balancer lord only two is necessary uh, because it's primarily going to be used as a small world bridge or occasionally to unbrick a pretty bad hand alongside addition, subtraction, or diameter. So yeah, Balancer Lord, very, very good card. 
We also have Link Infraflyer. Not only is it a decent extender, being able to summon to your zone a Link Monster points to, its primary purpose is acting as a bridge for Small World. Again, we're going to talk about all the Small World bridges in just a minute, but that's it's mainly here as a bridge for Small World, but it's also a pretty decent extender. And lastly, then, we have Parallel Exceed. Parallel Exceed being able to summon itself out to the field to a zone of Link Monster points to, as well as, as another copy from your deck. This will unbreak hands, this will win you games going second, this is your access code, talker, claim, and one card. This is brutal. It's also an absolute pain in my ass sometimes. I am so torn on this card. Sometimes I play it a three, sometimes I cut it completely. It's completely up to you whether or not you want to play this. It is phenomenal when it resolves. It is awful the rest of the time. And it's the only monster in the deck that doesn't have a clean bridge to circular. Uh, at least not in this build. You can put an extra card in to make a clean bridge, but I would rather not corrupt the deck any further. Uh, but yeah, Parallel Exceed, not a huge fan of that card, uh, but when it resolves, it is busted. And getting into the sign up mining, discard a card, search your deck for circular pretty straightforward. Math Mech Equation is a searchable monster reborn for Math Mech, so again, if you already have Super Induction, uh, Super Factorial, sorry, you can grab Equation off of Circular. It's pretty busted. Pretty good. And yes, we're going to talk about Super Factorial before we talk about Small World, because this is going to be a conversation and a half. Uh, Super Factorial, then, the card you're going to search off of Circular, you will set it. Then during your opponent's turn, you're going to target three different math mechs in your graveyard and summon them all to the field then immediately exceed summon into your pre-math mech Laplacian. Laplacian then is going to have a crazy effect we're going to talk about in a moment but basically you're able to snipe cards out of your opponent's hand, clear monsters, clear back row, give yourself an omni negate all on your opponent's turn using this card. It is pretty crazy whenever you're using it for the Laplacian. But we'll, we'll talk more about Laplacian in just a moment. The last card in the main deck we're going to be talking about is Small World. So Small World will basically, like I said, reveal a monster in your hand, and then you're going to check your deck for a monster that has exactly one of five things in common with it. It'll either have the same type, attribute, level, attack, or defense. Only one. No more than one, no less than one of those things in common. Now you're going to take your second monster that you just searched for, and you're going to search your deck for a third monster. And this third monster is going to have exactly one of these things in common with your new monster. And then this third card gets added to your hand and the first two get banished. So the idea here is, right, you want to have small world and you want to have your deck in a position where if you small world plus any monster in your deck, you can banish it for circular. The only one that this doesn't work with is, is Parallel Exceed. But yes, yeah, small world, if you have small world and effect Villar, Small World, Banish, Effect, Veiler to Banish uh, Nibiru from your deck, and then Nibiru searches Circular, right? So Veiler reveals Nibiru, Nibiru into Circular. Maxi reveals Infraflyer, Infraflyer into Circular. Ash Blossom reveals uh, Veiler, Veiler into Circular. Ghost Ogre, uh, Ghost Bell, sorry, reveals Veiler, Veiler into Circular. Balance of the Lord reveals either Veiler or Nibiru, both work. And then your Veiler or Nibiru into Circular. Sigma, you're never going to banish Sigma off Small World, don't even worry about it. Uh, Math Mech Edition, you banish it to grab to reveal Infraflyer, Infraflyer into Circular. Uh, same for Subtraction. Uh, diameter, again, you're never really going to banish off of Small World, but if you needed to, it's just into Veiler or Nibiru and then into Circular. The only one this doesn't work with is Parallel Exceed. You can add in cards to make it work. I just don't want to play them. And yeah, and another perk of Small World, right, is that if you already have Circular, you can do it in reverse. You can banish a card in your hand to search your deck for a hand trap. Like if you if you have one of these guys in hand, Math Mac Addition or Subtraction, you can banish it, banish Infra Flyer, to search your deck for Max C. Searchable Maxi, Searchable Ash Blossom, Searchable Effect Villar, Searchable Ghost Bell. Absolutely crazy, because if you already have Circular, Small World grabs you a hand trap of your choice. It banishes a Spur Engine card or, or a random card in your hand and searches your deck for a hand trap of, of virtually of your choosing. Absolutely crazy. I really, really do love Small World. I think this does add a lot to it. This is going to be the best way of playing it. 100,000%. 100, 100, absolutely. Uh, this is going to be one of the cards that break this deck. 
Getting into the extra deck then, you've saw 80% of the extra deck in play already. You know exactly how this thing works, especially if you've already seen it in the ladder, and it is everywhere on the ladder. Number one, we're playing two copies of Laplacian. Laplacian then on summon, you will detach up to three materials of it on summon to activate these effects in sequence. Uh, send a random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard. Send a monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. Send a spell or a trap your opponent controls to the graveyard. So that is non-targeting removal of a monster and a spell or trap and a card out of their hand at random. So you're possibly ripping three cards away from your opponent on this card summon and you're doing that during your opponent's turn thanks to your super factorial. That is absolutely disgusting, you're ripping three cards away from your opponent. And what makes it even better is you're going to be using Diameter as material, which means that because this is happening on your opponent's turn, not only are you ripping three cards away from them, your Laplacian also has a built-in Omni Negate, which makes it even better. Absolutely disgusting, you would have seen it in the gameplay, I think game two we revealed that sort of little combo. So Laplacian is absolutely not. We play two copies of it because if you're ever forced to go second, uh, a surprise Laplacian always sort of throws your opponent off guard. And then by the time you've gone into the second one, your opponent doesn't have any cards left. You've just ripped six cards away from them. It's crazy. So absolutely, I think two Laplacian is absolutely mandatory. 100%. We've got the Prime Aphmech Alembertian. Alembertian, again, is your primary sort of search card. It's a key part of your combo. I think at least two copies is core. I wouldn't play less than two, 100%. If, if you don't have two, then you can make do with one, uh, but you should you should prioritize getting two of this guy. You, you want two. Uh, getting into the link package, right? So you've got your link disable and link devotee, which are your main link ones. Uh, they exist pretty much purely to summon each other. <laughs> other like there's no other real reason. Uh, you would summon Link the uh, Disciple to your extra monster zone and then summon Link Devotee right under it using your diameter combo. Uh, you would tribute your Link Devotee using uh, your Alan Bershin's effect, right? And Link Devotee, when tributed, will summon out two Link tokens out to your field. So basically just replaces itself with two additional tokens, which is pretty nuts. Really, really good. You've got Link Rebo, which you'll use at the end of your combo just to pop it onto the field. It can tribute itself to negate a trap card, which really, uh, what that does is it helps protect your IP Mask Arena from infinite impermanence. That's its main purpose, to be honest. It has maybe some play against trap based strategies, but it usually doesn't, to be honest. Uh, it's mainly there to protect your Mask Arena from infinite impermanence. Cyber's Wicked then. Cyber's Wicked's gonna be the monster you end on with your extra monster zone. Anything that it points to cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is big, because sometimes people don't read that effect. It itself cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects as long as it's been link summoned, which makes it pretty good. Uh, if a monster is summoned to a zone it points to, you get to banish a Cyber's monster from your graveyard to add a Cyber's tuner monster from your deck to your hand, which means we get to search our deck for a diameter uh, during our main combo so that we have a lot of follow-up for our next turn. It means that basically you're guaranteeing yourself a turn 3 play to actually win the game. So Cyber's Wicked is fantastic for that purpose. Update Jammer gives your access code Talker its double attack. It helps you go in for a game and helps you win games no problem. This is your primary OTK machine and is going to be how you win most of your games. Absolutely Update Jammer, absolutely mandatory. IP Mask Arena. IP Mask Arena allowing you to link summon during your opponent's turn is absolutely crazy because you just get to choose whatever card you need to get rid of and this card gets rid of it. You know, you can go into the likes of Unicorn to spin a card back or Appalosa to give yourself a bunch of monster negates. There's also a bunch of other monsters you can play off of IP Mask Arena if you're feeling spicy. You want to go the Topologic Bomber Dragon. Let's bring him up. If you're feeling spicy, you want to go the Bomber Dragon. Absolutely. Uh, you've got Crusadia uh, Avramax. Avramax, a really spicy option as well. Absolutely, if you feel like dropping the Appalosa. Uh, I think Appalosa... I think Unicorn's better than Appalosa. I do. I don't know if that's a popular opinion. Uh, I feel like I miss Unicorn more when I, when I test the deck without Unicorn. Because obviously I don't just make these claims. I do test it. When I was testing the deck without Unicorn versus when I was testing the deck without Appalosa, I missed Unicorn a lot more. I think Unicorn's better. I really do. In, in this situation, within the context of how the deck is played, 
I think Unicorn is better for this deck than Apollosa is. I think both are fantastic, of course. Uh, in terms of your optimal link for it, Apollosa is probably the best one. But Avramax and the Topologic Barber Dragon are both absolutely dope. So do you do with that information as you will. I'm not telling you to do one thing or the other. You do with that as you will. I just think that there are some pretty dope op options out there. I think the Bomber Dragon is pretty sick. I haven't played it myself yet, uh, but it's pretty good. I'm, I'm actually probably going to play it as soon as I'm done recording. Uh, but yeah, I think either Avramax or Apollos will be your best bet. I am torn on which one I like more. Apollosa is good for securing a win and securing momentum that you've already got. It's like a win more card, but it really helps seal the deal in a lot of situations, which when you're going first, is sort of what you want. Uh, whereas Avramax is just an absolute game changer when it comes out. You could be at, you could be completely down and out losing the game. Avramax can come out and can just absolutely win you the game by itself. So it really just does sort of depend what you're after. Uh, I'm torn. I couldn't tell you which one's better. So you guys, you just decide which of these two you think is best. And lastly, the one you do have to play is Access Code Talker. I've never summoned this card in any deck as much as I have in this deck. is absolutely phenomenal. You're just going to boost them up to 5300. You're going to be double attacking. You're going to be destroying a bunch of cards. Absolutely busted. You absolutely need to play Access Code Talker in this deck. It is mandatory. This is your win condition, so it is. You stun going first using circular and your whole Appalachian combo or Laplacian combo. Uh, you stun your opponent with that, then you win the game with access code. That's the idea. So yes, that is the full deck card for card. Now you sort of know uh, what it is we're playing, why we're playing it. This I think is going to be one of the most competitive methods of building uh, math mix, whether or not it's card for card like this, probably not. But the idea behind this is going to be the best way of building it. Uh, complete focus down on the circular is going to be the way. So if you like what you're seeing, uh, like videos like this where we're breaking things down in depth, looking at how the mechanics fully work, and you want to see anything more like this, then again, feel free to subscribe. We're trying to get a video up every single day as often as we possibly can. So if you want to see consistent Yu-Gi-Oh content and the occasional bit of Pokemon sprinkled in uh, when we get the time. We've been super focused on Master Duel recently because there's so much cool new stuff. Uh, but we do also upload a wee bit of Pokemon here and there. Uh, but yeah, if that's something you're interested in, absolutely subscribe. Like the video if you watched, uh, if you liked seeing what you were seeing. And leave a comment down below for what your recommendations are. In fact, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me which of the Link 4s is your favourite. Do you like Appalosa? Do you like Avramax? Do you like the Bomber Dragon? Or is there any other sort of big Link monster that I'm not thinking of that you would play in that slot? Let me know down below. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.